Those of you who regularly watch, of course, know that I had COVID back in April. And then since then, well, I've always had antibodies. At least I thought I did. That is when I had my last COVID test before going on an assignment and therefore had to be tested. My antibodies had dwindled to the point where they were no longer able to be picked up by the test. Which means, once again, can you get COVID twice? Here's the history of my antibody tests. Firstly, the first one was in May. That was after I tested positive and the antibodies were positive. Then in July, I had a second antibody test that was also positive. In September, the third antibody test took place. This time, I was negative. Time for the doctor, Dr Sanjay Gupta, who's with me. Now, Dr Gupta, you had told me on several occasions, and my own doctors had said, that we know antibodies dwindle in efficacy over time. But I was surprised, well, Sanjay, that they'd gone already. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it is interesting. And, you know, obviously, we are all learning a bit about this particular novel coronavirus together. So, you know, some of what we, uh, you know, people are citing in terms of the length that the antibodies may say, stay is based on, you know, previous evidence with coronaviruses and other types of viruses and things like that. What the critical question, I think, Richard, you're asking, and I think most people would want to know, is th this new test that you have that show the, this particular type of antibody is no longer at a detectable range. Does that also mean that your immunity has waned correspondingly? And we don't know that. We don't know the answer to that. It could be that there's all sorts of different antibodies. The one that's being tested did wane. But there might be other antibodies that uh, were not tested for specifically, which still might provide benefits. We're learning here, Richard. Right. Now, there are three major cases, of course, of reinfection that everybody's talking about. There's the one in Hong Kong. There is the one in Nevada, the most recent one in Nevada, mm. where it was proven to be a different strain. And the woman in Amsterdam who got it and died and succumbed. Yeah. So... Until That's now, right. Sanjay, we'd always thought if you could easily catch it again, we would see quite a large number of people catching it again. What's the latest thinking? That's, that's right. I, and I think that's a really fundamental point, Richard, uh, you know, because people will have all the measurables of antibodies. At the end of the day, the critical issue is the one that you, you're, you're pointing out. Are there significant cases of reinfection? And there really aren't as of yet. I mean, we're still eight months into this, but I think we would have started to see some significant ones, certainly from people who were infected early on. The thinking is that even if you do have some waning of some of the antibodies, for example, I looked at your test results, uh, the nucleocapsid antibodies. Now that's an antibody to a specific part of the virus, but you could have antibodies still to the spike protein, which allows this virus to get into cells. Point is, uh, you, your body may now be sort of primed, if you will, to be able to fight this infection quickly if it's exposed to the virus again. Even though you can't measure certain things, your body may be in a sort of hypervigilant state, if you will, now. So uh, a, a much quicker reaction, much less illness, or you know, maybe no illness at all if you're to be exposed to the virus. So that's, that's the hope. And that would sort of fit the pattern, uh, Richard, of other coronaviruses. With SARS, remember 2003, uh, the belief now, 17 years later, is that with SARS, you got about two years worth of immunity after you were infected. There's good reason to believe that overall that length of immunity may be what we end up seeing here for the average person. Um, Sanjay, away from myself, but just more generally on, on this question, because I'm... Is it... As Europe faces a second wave and the US faces a second wave, potentially, and, 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 and things seem to be getting worse, it begs the question, mm. can we actually manage the restrictions necessary. Is it asking too much of people? I know there's cases of New Zealand and Cuba and these other places where they've managed it, but for big, complex economies like the US, the UK and Germany, is it simply possible to beat it? I, I really do think so, Richard. I mean, I, and I don't think I'm being euphemistic in saying that. I mean, we have a pretty good idea now of how this virus spreads. Let me share a couple things with you. We know about 10% of the people who are infected are responsible for 80% of the spread. 10% of the people infected responsible for 80% of the spread, which means the vast majority of people who are infected with this aren't spreading it. Why? 
It's because those 10% of people typically are in very, very predictable locations. Uh, inside, closely clustered, poor ventilation. Think of the virus that's coming off of them like, like wisps of smoke, okay? As opposed to the respiratory droplets, smoke kind of goes across an area and people around them in that closely clustered environment can become infected. There's just a couple of those types of situations that we could do well to avoid. It's tough to wear a mask if you're at a bar, for example, or a restaurant because you're right. eating or drinking. But going back to work, going to the theater, I was just listening to your previous interview. Uh, if you can wear masks inside, improve ventilation, still be good about hand hygiene, try and keep distance, I think it'll go a long way, Richard. I mean, you look at these big hospital systems that took care of tens of thousands of patients, sickest patients, all had COVID. Uh, very few healthcare providers got the infection. Why? They're inside with these patients, but they were wearing masks. So the answer is yes, I know it's a simple answer, and maybe not the one people want to hear, but there can be a return to some sense of normalcy with these basic public health measures. Dr. Sanjay Gupta, thank you. Uh, doctor, send the bill to the usual place. And, um, yeah, I was going to say, Richard, you I'll look well, by the of. way. Uh, you know, I didn't get to inquire about your health, but it's good to see you, my friend. Thank you.